Hello, big news from our friends over at DistroKid. They now have an app. This app works on iOS and Android, of course. And it's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Stores and all the stores where you buy apps. Go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features. You can upload new releases. You can get notified when you've earned royalties. Awesome. You can withdraw from the app via push notifications. A little dangerous for me, but rad. Anyways, go check it out. It's all at distrokid.com slash app. And don't forget, you can still get 30% off your DistroKid account by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash tour stores. Have a great one. We would like to celebrate our friends and supporters over at isotope.com. Find makers of audio software for repair, mixing, and mastering. You know their goods. RX-10, Neutron 4, Ozone 11, Nectar 4. Chris and I love them. We use them. And we know you'll love them too. And right now, they're having a New Year's sale on many of their software bundles. Go to isotope.com and check it all out. And use code VRUIN10 when you check out to get your discount. Again, it's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. And enjoy. Hello, Tour Story listeners. Thank you for your continued support, and welcome to Season 4. I'd like to take a second to thank our friends and sponsors over at Isotope. Here at Ruinous, Chris and I rely heavily on easy-to-use tools like RX and Ozone for all of our audio repair, mixing, and mastering. Now, Tour Story listeners can get 10% off Isotope plugins or try Music Production Suite Pro for free for 30 days using code FRET10. That's F-R-E-T-1-0. To get your discount and check out all of their easy-to-use products, go to isotope.com slash ruinous. That's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com slash ruinous. And use code FRET10. And thank you for listening. Hi, ma'am. Hi, Alan. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. It's yeah. Blustery, cold day here. Yeah, where are you? We're in Duluth, Minnesota. It's just a couple hours below the border to Canada, mm-hmm. right in the middle of the country. And uh, yeah, we get a lot of, we get pretty brutal winters here. And... Right. How has the winter been? Has it been weird like it's been everywhere else in the world, as far as I can tell? I don't know. It's actually been pretty pretty by the book it was a little late this year it's been kind of kind of normal you know we've had a couple of weird yeah. freakishly warm days that's kind of new yeah so i remember being as i was a kid if it reached 20 degrees ever in february or january it was like oh my gosh you know you'd put on your t-shirt and go outside that would be freakish that's but, wild you know, well foolish is what it is <laughs> foolish <but. laughs> how's duluth feeling uh pandemic wise Oh, it's going okay. We're kind of, I think they're kind of rounding the corner like a lot of mm-hmm. places right now. We're middle of the country is sort of a little bit delayed behind some of the bigger cities. But yeah, I mean, you know, they were, they were stacked to the nines at the hospital and, you know, kind of like everywhere else, it's, yeah. it's around and yeah, I mean, we know, we know, other person you know numerous people. Or, yeah. We know numerous people that have had it and have fared, and have fared just fine. I mean, mm-hmm. we've, We've dodged it or we've daughter dodged had it, it early on, but we kinda... you know, unless we were one of those people that didn't have any symptoms, symptoms, but I mean, we've been testing regularly, right. so yeah. yeah, same here. I've somehow, I'm not gonna yeah. what I've somehow dodged it. Um, so in the last couple of years, what have you done to occupy yourself or quell any anxiety or or, or did it or did anything work? Um, I don't know. I mean, as far as the band, we, we, when, when COVID hit, we had just, just gotten back from touring and kind of wrapping up touring a record. So we were, we were really lucky in that we weren't, you know, in the middle or just about to go out on, on a tour and kind of have all that money hanging out there, you know, that, that kind of gets thrown away at, at this (laughs) sort of lower class touring world, man. I mean, you, you know, you, you know, the way the cycle is with the record, you know, you're, okay, well, we're not working now. We're kind of getting this mm-hmm. thing together. And hopefully when it comes out, we'll be able to go out and 
you're kind of counting on that this this downtime that you're going to have is going to going to be that you're productive and you're going to have something later <laughs> to turn around and, and, and pick up. But um, uh, yeah, it, it got weird this time. But uh, but we did make a record. We made a record. Yeah, we ended. We had planned kind of loosely to make a record. Yeah, and, we did make a record, so we did use some time wisely. Did you use energy for anything else non-musical that you uh, always wanted to do, like make a quilt or something like that? I don't know. I I built a sauna in my garage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, <laughs> there yes. you go. <laughs> I'm not fucking. A. Well, it wasn't a. It, I'm not terribly proud of the experience. To be honest, I mean, I I could be proud of the accomplishment, <laughs> but it was a real wake up call for me. To be honest, doing that. <laughs> it was, I, I was. I remember it was extremely frustrating. Kind of the way typically, you know, like, oh, I gotta work on this thing, and you know, oh, the drill isn't working right, or oh, I gotta, you know, can't find the parts, of, you know, just kind of the things that happen when you're trying to work on something. And I remember coming out of the process, going like, "Wow, I think this pandemic's a little harder on me, it's gonna be harder on me than I thought it would be. <laughs> Maybe I better start checking into some." therapy and stuff like that <laughs> it was, right it kind of made me realize how uh how maybe there's a lot more going on i think <laughs> than I thought, right but i don't know what about you man <laughs> <laughs> i did many things that i thought i never would do mm-hmm. um did you start smoking no i did not no, um, that'd be cool though, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no one said that yet. <laughs> um, well, honestly, um, last not not this Just previous Christmas, but a year, yeah, the Christmas prior, I was diagnosed with advanced ovarian cancer. <laughs> Which really made my Christmas great, but yeah, <laughs> so yeah. honestly, I mm. um, twenty twenty one. I went through, you know, I did like nine months of chemo surgery and, and chemo surgery and in between that and all the um, stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. still kind of on the yeah. I'm still um, some dealing with programs. it. It's not it's not completely gone yet, but so that kind of threw us for a loop. Yeah, you know. Yes, I imagine. But I mean, in terms of well, that. thanks. But in terms of timing, it was probably the best time to get cancer because <laughs> we were we didn't have any tours yeah. scheduled. Mm-hmm. Um, made my heart, you know, I felt for people that actually have to work through through chemo treatment because it's pretty miserable. But mm-hmm. you know, yeah. So yeah, people doing it all the time. It's yeah, crazy. people do it all the time. But yeah, so that was Yeah, it's been something. a wild year. Yeah, that makes that makes for a um dynamic wild year yeah. to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did say you worked on the record, um <laughs> which is a fucking amazing record. Um, Thank you. But before we get to that, I've watched the videos quite a bit. I'm not a video guy. I lost interest in videos probably uh, when Michelle Gondry stopped making rock videos, <laughs> which ages me, uh, of course. Um, but the videos are so cool and they're so locked with the music. And I don't know if that's because your music is so cinematic or I don't I don't think that. Uh, I think it's a, a perfect pairing and a thoughtfulness of the director and um, and your music. Did you guys have a hand in making either Hey or the I Can Wait video? Um, no, it, actually, uh, when we had the record finished, we kind of just made a list of some people that we knew or that, and that we were interested in seeing if they'd be interested in doing a video. I don't know. Re- really, we just we were really lucky. I think we mm-hmm. just we had a good list. Uh, sent out some people, some people we knew somewhat, and some people were just completely just, well, this, I've seen this that they've done, and, mm-hmm. and they seem as a, a passionate artist, I, I, I think they could probably do something really cool. We didn't get a lot of instruction, maybe mm-hmm. just a little bit of, uh, I don't know, we, we were, <laughs> because of what was going on with Mim, we were kind of reluctant to be in the videos, mm-hmm. so we, we were kind of giving 
people that we asked a little more freedom to kind of go go a little more experimental with it. There's there's some with us in them, but mm-hmm. but it was uh, yeah. I, I I don't know. I think again, yeah, I think it's it just, just just lucky we just, we asked yeah. some people and good, maybe good yeah. talented people. I guess one thing we we didn't do is we didn't rein anybody in. Anything was anything was fair game. Yeah, anything was fair game. You know. Um, yeah. So we were hoping for some yeah. old things to happen. Yeah, you, met, you mentioned right. a few people. I think the the one for disappearing, uh, Dorian Wood. That was a kind of case where I just kind of barely knew Dorian and saw some of their work and just thought if Dorian's interested, I think it'd be really great. I thought that was really striking video. And um, Hey you know, was Hey was this same thing. Someone yeah. someone who has some Duluth connections mm-hmm. here uh, oh, and really? Minia- in Minneapolis, and mm-hmm. she had an idea. It was and we just kind of rolled with it. Yeah, and I love your presence in the videos separately. I think it's really cool. I like how Mem is looking yeah. one direction with the crown. Yeah. I mean, it's really, yeah. it was really amazing. Oh, oh, I kind of teared up in the I Can Wait video, kind of like that airplane when you're watching a funny movie. <laughs> it it took away uh, any emotional uh, strength I had, oh, and it was, wow. it was strange. Yeah, yeah, I was watching it at about 11 at night, which is kind of late for me these days. I'm sitting in here staring at a computer with headphones on. Wow. And, uh, oh, well, powerful. Well, that's great. That's, that's, yeah, that's, uh, that was, uh, um, Manuel did that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it looks to me like you have some tour dates coming up very, very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Next week we're doing, going to Chicago and Milwaukee, mm-hmm. Southern Minnesota, and then the big ones. Then Europe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you been to Europe much in the last few years? Not the last two years. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I speak uh, a few years to as, the, as uh, before. before yeah. Times. Oh. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. Many, many times. I mean, yeah. honestly, it's probably a better. <clears throat> yeah, it's probably a better. Probably a better market. Yeah, say, for as lack the, as of a better say. word. It's a terrible <laughs> word. Oh, man. But, yeah. No, I, the, the only good, I understand that is kind of a terrible word. But, <laughs> the first time I heard that. <laughs> uh, in this context, uh, it's, um, it I, makes sense. I celebrate that term <laughs> because I want, I'm, I'm in bands that do the opposite. Can't go over Can't to go Europe, over Europe. And I miss it desperately. Oh. It is fun. Yeah, we do, we do love playing Europe. Uh, early on when we played, there i think were some of the greatest memories just during the 90s and early 2000s and in europe for a small indie band was really pretty magical and a lot of the clubs were really cool and they'd take care of you and they'd put you up and they'd f- feed you amazing food you know i mean yeah mm-hmm. i mean you know you get older and been to a few of those things it, it gets a little old i suppose but <laughs> i don't know sure. you're Not young, a, it's no. a, a good meal never gets old yeah you're right i mean that's, that's true that's <laughs> i mean the point. older we get it's kind of that. That's what we look forward to. Yeah, oh, yeah we're going. Not the yeah. drive. We're going, we're going here. We're going, oh, we can eat it. Blankety blank, you know. I used to look forward to drive. Now, now, now I look forward to just getting there. Yeah. Are you guys prepared to, um, let me rephrase this. Are you prepared to have people's minds blown? Because <laughs> I can't imagine. This record is so enveloping sonically. I think... You're going to be speaking to people after the show if you do that, say at the merch table or something, and they're going to look like they've been lobotomized or you know Jack Nicholson and one flew over the cuckoo's nest. I, I, <laughs> yeah, you hope you hope so. I mean, you want, yeah, I think. That's, <laughs> no, isn't it? Isn't it really at the end of the day you want people to kind of have a great experience? You want to you want people to hear the record and go, "Wow, <laughs> yeah. I've never yeah. heard anything like that. That's crazy. Wow, that really took me somewhere I didn't know it could be possible. Or, mm-hmm. you know, on the shows, there's different tools going on when you're playing live. You know, you're you're in the same room. There's lineality. There's there's flashing lights. There's volume. You face know, to face to mm-hmm. face. You kind of have a yeah face to face. You know, you're in the same room mm-hmm. together. And there's there's sort of a different dynamic that happens there. And I I, I don't know. I mean, we're we don't sound the same way as the record sounds mm-hmm. live. I mean, it's still mm-hmm. drums, bass, and guitar and singing. You know, we, we try, we have a really, our, our, our sound tech, Tom Herbers, is really great at pushing the live element, you know, using some effects and some elements, you know, you know, in real time, in this that spirit of pushing, you know, pushing the envelope, pushing, you know, kind of the same way we're trying to push in the studio, you know, push it a little bit. Yeah. But it's still, you know, it's still drums, bass, guitar, and... And, you know, so 
I, yeah, I don't know. As far as people kind of coming to the shows and kind of walking away being dumbfounded or, <laughs> or whatever, I, I don't know. I think I think at the at the most, I hope that it's an interesting journey. You know, I hope that they'd heard the record and like, oh, that sounds cool. I wonder how they'll play that, and then mm-hmm. come and hear us. Right. And go, oh yeah, there's that song. And yeah, I mean, you never want it to be disappointing. I don't want it to be disappointing, but yeah. also, yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be different. I think people hearing this record live, no matter how you do it, is going to be different. Uh, I really do. I've listened mm-hmm. to you guys forever. I, I know what you sound like. Yeah. And and most this is a special record. Yeah, most of the people that are coming to our shows know what we sound like. Yeah. You know, yeah. but yeah, we're kinda, hoping that we kind of know we've been in this direction for a little while, yeah. and pushing this and that. And, yeah. Yeah. And we are we are kind of planning on playing the record. Yeah, we'll play the whole in record. Mm-hmm. kind of in sequence, possibly even. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> no, can't decide. Yeah, that's well, yeah, we can't more, decide, but I think it might make for a unique experience. Yeah. So. And how are you gonna, or have you thought about how you're going to incorporate drums into these new songs? We have thought about yeah, that. Well, yeah, we've been rehearsing, and it's. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you know, again, it kind of comes back to guitar, bass, and drums. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the songs, we actually wrote them that way, and we we were playing them, and, Mm -hmm. you know, we did, you know, during the pandemic, we were doing these Instagram live things, and we we kind of worked through Mm -hmm. all those songs kind of in our live yeah, just, just the two of us yeah, doing just the a two of us. rendition. Oh, cool. Yeah. Before we even went to record them. So. Our intent will not be to replicate <laughs> yeah, we don't replicate the, the record, records. but in, you know, in sure. sonically, but possibly in spirit, spirit or, or <laughs> emotion <laughs> or some way. Hopefully it'll be yeah. impactful, yeah. you know. Right. Well, it's, it it's us, and we're singing songs. And yeah, it's the same. So, yeah, so you, hope, it's you hope that something... It's something... just us two clowns still singing. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I'd like to play um, White Horses to give people a wonderful example. Oh, awesome. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. All right, here it goes. <laughs> Much 
I first got this record, I was in Hawaii mm. and I was running by myself. <laughs> and I was probably like punching the air in like <laughs> acting like I was at a hip hop show or something. It's such a huge, <laughs> tough record for me. I love it. That's great, man. Yeah. I'd like to um, suggest that I do a remix and I just add super big drums to it. And we call that a remix. Yeah. I just karaoke it with drums. Yeah, we kind of kind of left it pretty open for drums and beats. Anybody that wants to, anybody wants to drop them into their house mix is, is sure. welcome to. Sure. <laughs> Or dub it out. Yeah, you, know, you, could, you could. I think Kendrick out. Lamar is going to use this right now so. for his next. That'd record. be great. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. So, where did you ultimately record it? Did you do it at home, or did you go to a studio, or both? Or? Um, we went down in Minneapolis. Uh, B.J. Burton, producer engineer, has a studio down there, and and uh, yeah, at some point it was like, well, we're testing this and this. Let's let's do some limited. Mm -hmm kind of sessions and kind of get get our feet wet and we had just kind of established a a way of working on the last record with bj to mm -hmm. where it was actually really pretty easy to to still be kind of sparse and careful and kind of go in for only a few hours at a time maybe work for two days or something like that then go away for a few weeks test <laughs> make sure everybody's cool again mm -hmm. see what we see mm -hmm. what we're working on maybe write another maybe write another song go back, keep at it a little bit. You know, sometimes I would go down by myself. Sometimes Mim and I would both go. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how we were working with the last record. You know, we'd go bit by bit. And mm -hmm. it takes a while before we kind of find, you know, we'll have the songs, but it'll take a while before we find our groove. You know, it takes a little mm -hmm. while to kind of dig around some sounds. And and then finally, when you find that first thing, like, oh, okay, that works. There mm -hmm. we go. This is going to work for this song. Mm -hmm. that's kind of yeah. like a little light at the end of the tunnel you can see your, your you know i guess smell smell blood maybe that's that's <laughs> better phrase but no, you kind of yeah. smell the blood a little bit like oh okay okay something here and that's sometimes that can be the, the little motivation that kind of pushes you forward mm -hmm. into you know through then the rest of the testing and trying and and, and failing until yeah. you kind of find the sounds and the, and the movement you want yeah, for this record, honestly, once we had dialed in the vocals, everything else just kind of fell into fell place. Easily, yeah. 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 But we were, we were tracking the vocals yeah. early on. We, we'd do, you know, even if we had like a rhythm and maybe just something sonically happened, like, mm -hmm. okay, let's track the vocals just so we know where this is at and what, mm -hmm. what the song's doing. Another interesting thing about this record is that BJ kind of was working his magic throughout the tracking process yeah. and by well, the time yeah yeah by the time we're everything was sounds. yeah but by, by the time everything was tracked the song was kind of done we'd found the sounds and this and that and there was very little post production i think it's probably easy to look at this record and go oh like, okay they did some stuff and then they and they put it into the computer and like yeah. ran it through a bunch of stuff and cut it up and did sure. this and this and this and this and you know yeah there's there's a bit of editing and you know like oh this is a cool vocal loop here let's mm -hmm. move it over here instead but you know the the final sound that was a lot that was a lot more part of the initial creating process mm -hmm. than it, than it maybe normally is for most mm -hmm. records you know it's sort of traditionally the okay now let's let's make the magic happen happens when you go to mix you right. know and, mm -hmm. which yeah. you know when you think about it it's like, well okay sometimes that works but well we we made plenty of records yeah we made a lot of records we're like that, okay track it with all right that, now let's yeah. see what let's see what Dave Fridman's going to do plan, and, oh, okay yeah. let's see what this you know but it makes it a little more exciting because you can you see what's happening you, see, you hear it right away you know you know and then and then that right. just kind of inspires and so it's it's yeah it's, it was a nice way to work yeah i mean it, it it sounds like you took a little time to do it and it was a, a little bit sporadic but it's so cohesive and i mean there's also not actually a sonic gap in the record right is everything connected I think there are, there might be a couple little gaps. Ga oh, okay. I can't think of where yeah. they are. You know, where, you know, there's the mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, AD, it, the vinyl. And yeah. Stuff yeah. Too. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. I, it just feels. I mean, again, it's so it flows. enveloping, and it, it, when I have it on in my headphones, I'm that's the only thing I'm doing, which is <laughs> is that good? Which is rare. <laughs> it's, it's like I, you know, like I was doing dishes the other day and listening to it super loud in my headphones and. 
I've got uh, a family and some pets, and they were just like looking at me. I bet I look like a psychopath. <laughs> what? Just washing the shit out of the dishes. <laughs> yeah, like trying to sing. Yeah, I mean, I think the fact that it is a cohesive album is kind of unique in this day and age. You know, <laughs> cohesive. Yeah, no, right? really. Yeah. Well, I mean, in terms of an experience as an album, it really, and is, not yeah. just you know. Well, we've never been a band that has had a single, you know, so so this is kind of perfect for us. Yeah. And I I really thought, and it must be because of the volume and uh, the circumstances in which I've been listening to it, I was just imagining you guys recording it so fucking loud, like blowing speakers. I just had that kind of in the back of my mind, you know. Yeah. Because that's, that's what it feels like. Yeah. yeah it's, it was like that. We, we were loud. I had a... A couple tracks where I have this AC30 just, just doing the magic, man, and just it's just just yeah. There's some loud. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you're familiar familiar with the mastering process, the, the whole mastering process for the last two records was really interesting too, because it's just both times when we turned them in, turned them in, the mastering people were like, "We can work with this, <laughs> but we have to tell you this is the loudest. This is the loudest record we've done in probably four years." That's so great. Uh, it, yeah, but and of course, and of course, the more I learn about mastering, the more I'm like, I don't know, is that actually a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if being the loudest <laughs> record that they've had to handle is necessarily a good thing. But well, we'll there see. could be a, a different description, descriptive word they could have used that would yeah. be worse. So this is the most unmasterable. This record. is the shittiest record the we've shittiest ever song. mastered. Yeah. We've it's mastered most, in four years. This makes our job so completely <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> Yeah, no, BJ's, BJ is definitely interested in finding the limits and pushing past them. Mm-hmm. Um, well, one one last thing is uh, there's a little tidbit on Days Like These, and that's the solo at the end. It's kind of a meandering, mm-hmm. fun. Oh, yeah. Keyboard. yeah. Little, little disco, a little funk, mm-hmm. something. What is that instrument? That is synth guitar. That is fun it is fun it was super especially if you take the journey and you get all the way there and you're like oh my god what's yeah going on? yeah i know when it first comes That's in you're filthy. like oh oh what oh oh we're gonna do this oh you're gonna really do this and then it keeps going yeah that's uh this is sex music all of a sudden yeah yeah very connotative tone <laughs> yeah i don't know what yeah that's weird actually i use uh i use guitar synth actually a lot on this record in fact most of the sounds Hmm. That sound like a synth or a keyboard or, or probably actually a guitar. But uh, yeah, yeah, that just kind of came out of trying to figure out how to make the guitar sound interesting after <laughs> having it in your hands and listening to it for decades. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. But still wanted to use it. Well, that's a nice nugget to come across. Yeah, it's it's weird. Yeah, that that's the guitar set. Yeah, you can you can get really cliche like that. Those little you know those those sound you know like mm-hmm. like what you'd hear yeah. like someone from the chick korea electric band or something mm-hmm. playing back in in 82 exactly. or something but but um but a lot of like the pads a lot of stuff you know you can you know you can distort a synthesizer and you know you can gate up a synthesizer and sure and get it do all kinds of stuff but i don't know something about the guitar there's it's it's immediate it's 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 human you every time you hit it it's a little bit different you know there's there's mm-hmm. something about kind of having that thing being thing that's generating or triggering the sound that kind of ends up you get a little bit more organic feel than if it was mm-hmm. a keyboard that was something we were trying to trying to do yeah last few records actually i've been trying to be like well okay i like playing guitar but i really don't like the way it sounds most of the time of recordings can can i can i still do this you mm-hmm. know and yeah it was a little bit of a journey um what have you guys been listening to lately you got anything on the turntable you can't get off I don't know we we've, we've got a band. There's a this band going to be touring with us called Divide and Dissolve. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty excited about that. That's really cool. It's kind of a little scene going on, kind of a loose scene with that and uh, more mother. Are they from Duluth? No, they're from Australia. Oh, they're okay. from Australia. It's a duo from Australia, and they're they're definitely more out and noisy mm-hmm. than than we are and avant garde than than we are. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, that that stuff's good. More mother. I'm actually kind of excited about the Spoon record. We, we I just read keep paralleling with them. I just I, I just know. read a review that somebody's saying it's the 
best record they've ever made. I've I've so, heard a couple of singles. Yeah, That's what I read yeah. too. I've heard a couple of singles. And I think it's really yeah. smart. And I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, but there's there's parts of me that resonate with a little bit when I, I see some of the decisions he makes, and I think, oh, okay, I understand that. I can see we're we're a little right. bit in the same, uh-huh. little bit looking at the same kind of the same cloth. same sky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to let you go, but I want to ask you one more thing before I do. Outside of touring, which I'm assuming you're looking forward to, what else are you looking forward to in the next year or so? I'm looking forward to justice. <laughs> justice. Ooh, that's something. <laughs> I don't I'm know. Looking... I don't know if that'll happen in the next year. But... I know, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to gardening. Probably won't be able to do as much this year because we'll be gone yeah, we'll more be in the spring but yeah uh, looking last forward couple to... years gardening has been a real lifesaver and mm-hmm. we'll, i don't know i see myself eventually farming maybe but i don't know we'll see mm-hmm. i'm getting pretty good at it <laughs> all right what about you ma'am well i'm looking forward to warm weather and since last summer was kind of a a bust for me just to kind of experience just experience a little bit more of it you know enjoy it i think i might want to get so alan alluded to you know duluth being on a big hill so i might get one of those electric bikes and so then i can go Mm. all over town up and down the hills i think that might be pretty fun i'm gonna do it those electric bikes are yeah wonderful Yeah. yeah that's it when does tour start? Is it next week? Yeah, well, we just have next three week, shows. Just three shows, three then... shows next week, and then we have, I think, mid March. Yeah, mid March. Then mid March we, we go, go, we go east. A couple Europe weeks and off in Europe. And yeah. Festivals. Oh, okay. So yeah, I... we're jumping I... in a lot more than we've. Yeah, it's weird. Hope we can manage. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was. It's such a romantic thing when you're younger, you know. I know. And I feel like pandemic really was. It, it's kind of like waking up from that that naive child i don't know I, at least for me mm-hmm. like i remember like the idea of like hopping in the car and going to do a show was so romantic that literally the drive was romantic right you know and you know it would suck and you know you have years and years of driving like oh yeah but but there's still a little bit of romance to it and i swear this pandemic has, has destroyed that like every time i've had to go and get in the car and be in there mm-hmm. for more than half an hour I'm like jumping out of my skin. Well, you got to get thinking, used like, to it again. What am I going to do? We're going to sit in this thing for eight hours, man. You have to build up a tolerance to it. Maybe that's it. So Yeah, maybe that's it. I've, I've had the same feeling where um, I've wondered if, if I've lost my tolerance to right. traveling, mm-hmm. which I've always loved and never really thought of as anything taxing, terribly taxing. And But then it's like, oh, no, I have I had this two years to – unconsciously think about this yes. and yeah. I aged 40 yeah, years yeah. and two yeah. years or something <laughs> like something weird happened Well, then there was this, like, cause I'm always yeah. like fighting, you know, fighting. I'm not worried about getting old, but I'm always just like fighting, you know, not having energy. Or, right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I think the psychological fear of leaving your home during the pandemic mm-hmm. might have, maybe that's a carryover. I think that's a carryover. Maybe the safety here. Yeah. You, you, there's it's more safe safety at home. At home. Yeah. subconsciously yeah maybe. it's t- it's scary yeah. out there yeah the sub yeah the subconscious going oh you're gonna go out there well that's where the mm-hmm. danger is right <laughs> danger. Yeah. weird well, well we're gonna all go we're gonna yes we might all right. in a year we might we might feel like teenagers again who knows <gasps> that'd be nice that'd be nice yeah yeah so uh thanks again and um have good shows oh thanks next yeah, week thanks yeah, a lot thank all, right, all right we'll see ya bye, bye. bye. When you think you've seen everything If I were living in days like these And say you only take what you bring Maybe that's just the way they speak Know that I would do Something that I can't see. Everybody just chased by dreams. That's why we're living in days like these again. It is 
on something you can share It isn't coming in twos and three. Always looking for that one sure thing Oh, you want it so desperately You know you're never gonna feel No, you're never gonna be Maybe never even see me That's why we're living in 